Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rabiul. I work as a lecturer in pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. Today's topic is Kleinfelter syndrome part 2. This video will contain brief discussion about the clinical features, diagnosis and management of Kleinfelter syndrome. Okay, a lot of topics, so let's begin. So first, we will talk about the clinical features. And always remember, during the first few years of life, the body's need for testosterone is low. That's why most of the babies with Kleinfelter syndrome usually do not show any noticeable difference with a normal male infant or with a normal young boy during the first few years of life. In some cases, they may show slightly reduced muscle strength and uh, in some cases they may have slight delays in learning to sit up, crawl or walk. During childhood, Children with Kleinfelter syndrome tend to be tall, thin, with particularly increased length between the soles and pubic bone. For example, in the whiteboard, you can see that I have drawn a very simple diagrammatic image that is denoting the major clinical features of Kleinfelter syndrome. And if you look carefully, in the leg of this individual, you can see that the length from soles to the pubic bone seems longer. So they tend to have relatively longer legs and always keep that thing in your mind that individuals with Kleinfelter syndrome will be tall and they will have relatively long legs. So what will be the clinical features during puberty. During puberty, in individuals with Kleinfelter syndrome, the normal development of testes and the normal masculinization do not occur. As a result, their testes will remain small and often penis will also be small in size and due to lack of androgen or due to lack of testosterone hormone the individuals will show feminine characteristics they will include high pitched voice female distribution of pubic hair and they will also have weaker muscles and weaker bones and the bones will be prone to osteoporosis and fracture and they will also have reduced level of sperms and they may also have low level of energy. In some cases individuals with Kleinfelter syndrome will also have mildly impaired IQ. So these were the major clinical features that we will see during puberty and always remember most of the cases of Kleinfelter syndrome are usually diagnosed during puberty due to appearance of these features. Moving on to an adult individual, what will be the clinical features in case of an adult? Well, in case of an adult, always remember that almost all of the adult individuals with Kleinfelter syndrome will be infertile, okay? And also due to lack of androgen, they will also have feminine characteristics. So there will be high pitched voice, less muscle mass, less amount of hair and gynecomastia. And sometimes there will be permanent gynecomastia that should be surgically removed in order to correct the problem. So these were the major clinical features of an individual with Kleinfelter syndrome. And now that we have talked about the major clinical features, now we will move on and talk about the diagnosis of Kleinfelter syndrome. 
Now, when the physician is suspecting a case of Klinefelter syndrome, the physician will advise karyotyping test to confirm the diagnosis. Small amount of blood or skin sample will be taken from the suspected individual and then the sample will be sent to the lab for karyotyping test. If we find two or more X chromosomes in the suspected individual with the help of karyotyping test, then the diagnosis will be confirmed for Klinefelter syndrome. Recall from the previous video of this series, we had seen that in majority of the cases of Klinefelter syndrome, the karyotype will be 47XXY. And in some other cases, the karyotype will have mosaic patterns. Now always remember, most of the cases of Klinefelter syndrome are usually diagnosed during puberty because that is the time when noticeable clinical features begin to appear. But sometimes Klinefelter syndrome may be also diagnosed before birth. In order to diagnose Klinefelter syndrome before birth, fetal tissue is collected by chorionic villus sampling or amniocentesis and then the fetal sample is sent to the lab for karyotyping test. But one thing you have to remember that these prenatal tests have small risk of miscarriage and that's why these prenatal tests are not routinely done. They are done only in cases where the mother has family history of chromosomal disorder or when the age of the mother is more than 35 years. So now that we have talked about the diagnosis of Klinefelter syndrome, now we will move on and talk about the management of Klinefelter syndrome. Now, the clinical manifestations of Klinefelter syndrome vary among different cases. That's why the treatment should be customized according to the needs of each patient. Testosterone replacement therapy is the primary treatment whenever an individual is diagnosed with Klinefelter syndrome he is referred to the endocrinologist for testosterone replacement therapy. Testosterone may be given by injections, it may be also given by pills or even through the skin by transdermal testosterone patches. Now in individuals with Klinefelter syndrome who have very low level of testosterone, the replacement therapy is beneficial and it will increase muscle mass and uh, make the appearance more masculine. It will also make the bones stronger and prevent osteoporosis. Testosterone replacement therapy in these individuals will also promote growth of facial and body hair. But one thing you have to remember that testosterone replacement therapy will not increase the size of the testes, neither it will reduce gynecomastia or it won't reduce the enlarged breasts that we see in some cases of Klinefelter syndrome and testosterone therapy will also not correct infertility. Testosterone therapy has some mild side effects. They will include development of acne, high risk of enlarged prostate, and if transdermal testosterone patches were used, sometimes there may be rashes in those areas. Now, the benefit of testosterone therapy is variable. Let me explain. Always remember that in Klinefelter syndrome, testosterone level is reduced variably. That means in some individuals with Klinefelter syndrome, 
the testosterone level is very low, whereas in some other cases of Klinefelter syndrome, the testosterone level is not very low, but it is low to normal. Testosterone replacement therapy is proven beneficial in those individuals who have very low level of testosterone. However, in individuals who have low to normal level of testosterone, the benefits of testosterone replacement therapy is not clear. Moving on to the management of gynecomastia, recall that we know gynecomastia means enlargement of male breast tissue and uh, in males who have enlarged breast tissue there is higher risk of development of breast cancer. That's why mastectomy or surgical resection of the enlarged breast is the treatment of choice. Now recall that we had seen nearly all individuals with Klinefelter syndrome are infertile and they are unable to produce sufficient amount of sperm to naturally fertilize an ovum. But recent advances in assistive reproductive technology have made it possible for some individuals with Klinefelter syndrome to become father. One notable procedure is called testicular or epididymal sperm extraction and intracytoplasmic sperm injection. In this procedure, first sperm is extracted from the testis or from the epididymis and then it is artificially injected inside the cytoplasm of an ovum to fertilize that ovum. Regarding the management of speech difficulties and psychosocial difficulties, always remember that a multidisciplinary approach should be taken to manage these problems. The list of specialists in the multidisciplinary team should include a physical therapist, speech therapist, behavioral therapist, occupational therapist, mental health therapist, etc. Certain physical activities like playing tennis, swimming and karate have shown to increase motor skills and coordination skills in many individuals with Klinefelter syndrome. So this concludes today's video on Klinefelter syndrome. I hope this video was helpful. If you like my videos, do comment, share, subscribe and let me know. And for my students, I will also recommend you to go through your textbooks to know more information. Okay, that's all for today. Until next time, take care and stay blessed. Thank you.